everybody and welcome to Multilingual Family. Today I want to talk to you about what to do to make sure that your children speak your language with you. A friend of mine came up to me some time ago and told me that she had a cousin that is German and lives in France that speaks mostly with the kids in German but the kids won't speak back to her in German. They speak mostly in French and when they speak in German they have a strong accent. So she was wondering why it is that some kids seem to have more difficulties picking up the languages of the parents and some others don't. And she also asked me what my parents did differently. How they managed to make sure that we, my brother and I, spoke to each of them in their languages and that was not really ever an issue to us. That got me thinking and I would like to share with you the two things that I know to be true about this topic. As many of you may know, I grew up bilingual in a bilingual environment where bilingualism was basically the norm. And I can tell you that in probably 95% of the cases, the kids, like my friends, didn't reject the minority language of their parents, or at least of one of their parents. They spoke it and they used it proudly without a problem. But I know that I that there were like one or two cases that I know of where the kids didn't speak their minority language. And in a few seconds, I'm gonna tell you what the what these parents did differently and what you can do to make sure that your child uses your language proudly and consistently. So one of the most important points is what I like to call consistency with pride. I'm going to repeat it. Consistency with pride. So once you choose your, uh, the method that suits your family best, you just stick to it. Stick to it all the time, as much as possible. So for instance, if you have the method, the OPOL method, one person, one language, then you want to make sure that you use the language that, that is yours, that you can speak best, all the time. When people are around, when people are not around, when you are alone with your child, when you read, all the time, use that naturally, you know? This is so important because you don't have to forget that you as a parent or also as a teacher, you're always a role model for your child. The way you eat, the way you act, the way you speak, all of those behaviors are going to be mirrored by your child. Your child is going to absorb that and is going to do the same. It's going to learn from you, basically. So make sure you know exactly how you're speaking because the way you speak is also the way your child's going to speak. In other words, if you, for instance, switch from one language to the other, from the minority to the community language and then back to the minority without even noticing it, then it is going to be very likely that your child, in the best case, will switch as well. And in the worst case, it will probably reject to use one of the languages completely. And why? Because you are, you, you, you are showing your child your, th that path. You're telling him or her that that's the way to do it. So if for you it is very important that you, your child reaches a high level in the languages that you are passing him or her on, make sure you are consistent. You stick to your language. Another point that I would like to mention at this point is that, for instance, if, if you switch to the community language often, or for instance when people are, are around or when you are outside somewhere, then you have to be aware that you might be sending your child a subliminal message without noticing it. And that message could be something like, oh, I don't feel very comfortable using my, my minority language, so that's why I switch to the community language when people are around, or I feel a little insecure, or I don't feel very proud of my language, and that's why I switch. And you don't have to say that. Your child feels it. You know, children are very receptive. They, they feel very fast what is going on. So if you're afraid, if you're, if you're feeling uncomfortable, if you're feeling insecure, if you're feeling whatever, your child is going to feel it. 
and that's going to have a direct impact on the way your child speaks. So again, if your child feels that you are feeling uncomfortable or that you don't, you don't, you don't seem to feel very proud of your language, then your child won't probably want to speak that language. In the end, what you have to know is that you are you are a role model. You are you are the person that has to make sure that your child uses the language with pride. So that's why I say consistency with pride because only consistency is not going to be enough. You also have to be proud of your language, of your of your culture, of the, all the background so that you can stand up there and use it and so that your child feels that that language is something special, something good, something positive, something that is going to help him or her. And if you set that ground, then it is very likely that your child will speak your language with you and will not reject it. The second point that I know has a direct impact on whether your child speaks a language or doesn't is how much quality exposure it gets. So you need to make sure that it has, your child has enough quality exposure. And that means on a daily basis, if it's, if it's possible or at least regularly. And in the first place, it, it needs a regular input from real human beings. And then obviously you can supplement it with, with books and audiobooks and vacations to that country and grandparents and other people that speak the language and so on and so forth. So um, that is a basic point. If, if your child doesn't speak it, it could be also because the input is not enough. So again, if you just stick to those two basic points that I've mentioned earlier, consistency with pride and enough quality exposure, I'm so sure that it's going to work out that your child will proudly use your language and it will feel normal, it would feel like home. At some point it feels so normal that speaking to you or to your, your partner in another language will feel weird. That's for instance what happened to me and to my brother and to so many other bilingual friends that I have that are successful multilingual people. And what happens is that I, for instance, it will never cross my mind to speak to my father in another language than Swiss German. It just feels weird. It, fe it feels weird. So I know when I see him, I always speak in Swiss German. When I see my mother, I always speak in Spanish. And it just feels normal. And that's what you want to achieve with this consistency. You do it in the first years, it might feel a little hard in the beginning, but at some point it is the norm. It's normal. And then it just works. It just works out without thinking. You don't have to put so much effort into it anymore because it feels normal. And that's that's what you want to achieve. Normality. To f you, you're not trying to teach your child, like in school, something. You just want to pass languages on in a natural way. So tell me what you think, give me a like, give me a comment, and I see you soon. Bye bye.